We mentioned type and instance parameters earlier on in the course, but in this unit I just want to go over them again in a little bit more detail to make sure you fully understand the differences between the two. If I use this simple model as an example to, to best explain instance and type parameters, and I'll use the external wall as a specific example. So if I select an instance of the wall, i.e. a single segment, we can see in the properties palette the wall type and the wall type there is listed as wall external 102 brickwork 75 insulation 100 block work and 12 mil of plaster that's just the name given to this particular wall type so obviously Revit has to have some way of knowing what makes up that particular wall how thick it is what layers uh, make it up so if I hit the edit type button all these parameters and their values are type parameters they're consistent with all these segments of wall because they're all of the same type so if I was to change any of these here and I go and select another segment of wall I would see those changes back in the type properties box. So let's go in and look at the makeup of the wall, i.e. what layers constitute this particular wall type. So if I hit the edit structure button, again, these are all type parameters that are being used to store this information. So here are the various layers that make up this particular wall type. Let's go and change the core layer from 100mm to 400mm. OK that. Apply. And you may have noticed that the walls suddenly got a lot thicker. The important thing to note is that although we've still got our original single element of wall selected, when I made that change to the type properties, all elements of the wall, of that wall type, and they're all the same, got updated and changed. And that is a feature of a type parameter, that it will update all the elements in your model of that particular type, which makes it really powerful to update your model where you need to make small changes uh, but you want those changes to flow to all the elements of the same type. So what if we want to vary the properties of just a single instance of our wall? So let's take this end wall here. If we want to vary its height, for example, but we don't want to change the height of all the other instances of this wall, that's where instance parameters come in. If the height parameter of the wall was a type parameter, then if we changed it here, then all other instances of that type of wall would change as we've just seen with its thickness. So we need to have a different category of parameter that allows us to change the properties on a per item basis. And that's where instance parameters comes in. Now instance parameters are always displayed at the top level of the properties palette. So if I go back and show you that again, select an instance of our wall, i.e. a single element. Remember we can drill down to the type parameters, but doing so will affect all the other instances of this wall type. However, any changes we make at this top level will only have an effect on the element we have selected. Now you can select more than one element and change the instance parameters at the same time. So let's select three instances of our wall. So here's our instance parameters, top constraint, up to level three we'll be covering levels very shortly in the course for now i am going to set them as unconnected and give them a height of 12 meters 
and apply and you can see those three instances of the wall have their height properties changed but the other instances of that wall type are completely unaffected exactly the same principle for any other element in Revit so we take a window we might want to vary the sill height of a particular window hence the sill height is shown at the top level here as an instance parameter so that we can vary it on a per window basis without affecting any of the other windows of the same type however if I go into edit type we look down here if I decide that this particular window type needs to be wider let's say two meters and I apply that I'll just move the type properties panel over so you can see the effect and if you take a look at the model as I do this oh just okay that you can see how that particular window type the width has changed across all instances in the model so just think carefully about whether you need to control a parameter or property on a per item basis or whether you want that parameter to filter down to all the elements in your model it's particularly important when you start creating your own content or defining your own additional parameters you'll need to make a choice as to whether those parameters are instance parameters or type parameters so we've seen earlier in the unit how we can edit the type properties or type parameters of a particular family so remember that edit type button and you can see I've got no objects selected in the current view so I can actually edit the type properties for the view itself and that's what you're seeing here so I'll cancel out so we talked about parameters driving everything Revit that actually includes the views themselves so if you don't have any objects selected in the current view you will actually see the properties in the properties palette for the view itself and you can configure its scale and how it displays so if we want to for example create a new window type if I select the window remember the edit type button there allows us to change the type parameters remember those changes are going to filter across all instances in your model of that particular window type however if we want to create a new window type and vary that one all we need to do hit that edit type button to make sure we've got this type properties panel up and then before we do anything else hit that duplicate button there it will ask you then for a name for your new type by default you can see that it takes the existing name of the type you've created it from and just adds a two after it so let's say we were creating a new window type that happened to be three meters across it might make sense to include that in the name in the description so change it there and now you can see in the type drop down here this is the new type that we've just created I'm going to go and change that width to three meters okay okay I'm just getting an, an error there because the the window now at three meters is actually too wide and it conflicts with the end of the wall so I'm going to ignore that for now just okay that and there is our new window type you can see that the remaining windows are of the original type that we created so I could for example let's move that door over move that window over so with that window selected that is the original type if we look down here in the type selector we now have the additional type that I've just created select that 
and it changes to the three meter wide window. So just to reiterate, if you want to create a new family type, let's do it with the, the walls very quickly. So select an existing type. So there is our existing wall type. All you need to do, hit edit type. And before you do anything else, and I can't stress that enough, hit that duplicate. If you don't and you start changing it here, remember you're changing the original wall type, not the new one because you haven't created it yet. You need to use that duplicate button. Pick a name, hit OK. There's your new wall type. Now you can go and make any modifications you need to without affecting the original wall type in your model. And that completes this unit. To get the most out of this training material, please take the complete course online at bimscape.com. Here you will find a complete learning management system that allows you to work through the course at your own pace. Comprehensive written tutorials provide additional information to that found in the training videos. Mark each unit as complete as you finish it and move on to the next. At any point you can return to any of the units you have previously completed to go over the material again. If you'd like to take this course online, please visit www.bimscape.com forward slash Revit for details.